Do you know which album sold most copies in 1985? Dire Straits. That ain't working. That's the way you do it. Money for nothing and your chicks for free. Money for nothing. All right. So what was the biggest selling compact disc? Dire Straits. Come on. OK, Rover, so what's the album called? Brothers in Arms, Die Straits. I'm sure one of the reasons why Brothers in Arms was such a big record is that it coincided with the CD. In fact, So Far Away, I think, was the first CD single um, that was ever made. I've no doubt that that had a lot to do with it, and also the fact that a couple of the songs on the record did, did well in the States, and that'll always sell you records, so that, that was a big factor, too. I don't think when you're writing a song or making a record that you're not really conscious that it's going to be a big record. Um, making Brothers in Arms, I, I was just making another album. I wasn't really conscious of, uh, about the, the, the size of it. I think it's really not connected with your journey as a writer or a songwriter. One of the standout songs from the album, which still resonates to this day and remains a staple in Knopfler's live shows, is the title track itself, Brothers in Arms. Brothers in Arms was just a phrase that I heard and my dad happened to remark how, how ironic it was that the Russians were siding with the Argentinians and the Falklands. There you are, he said, there's the Russians are being bro brothers in arms with a fascist dictatorship. And the phrase stuck in my head. And you know, when you're a songwriter, that's something that you, you take notice of. You've kind of. To a certain extent, you've got a kind of antennae for that, that sort of thing. In fact, the first line of the song, these mist-covered mountains, the mist-covered mountains is the title of an old Scottish air. And so I said, these mist-covered mountains are a home now for me, but that's taken from an old song title. And that's what a songwriter will do. You just, there's just these, there's just this stuff. There's this stuff in the scrapyard. These mist-covered mountains Oh, now for me When my home is alone And I always will be Someday you'll return to What I was actually thinking about in terms of the song itself was the idea of the mortally wounded man surrounded by his friends, you know, and it's, that's just a, a, one of those battle scenes, isn't it? Um, uh, there's a poem of the burial of Sir John Moore at Corona, you know, and things that I'd read as a kid. Yeah, the In the starlight 
became a sort of an anthem for troops in the Gulf. I was actually doing an interview one day on the radio and this a tank man actually called up to say that they, at the end of the battle they, <coughs> they linked all the tanks up in the dawn and they played it. It's a comfort to me that the song, that, that the music, not just that song, but other music, is um, used by people for all sorts of things, to uh, celebrate things and to, uh, to mark occasions, you know, to get married. And then a woman came, a woman told me the other day that, uh, uh, oh, she said, uh, I used, I, you know, we used all your stuff for our wedding. Well, that's really nice, isn't it? That's great. So it's not all to do with necessarily uh, funerals. And <laughs> Money for nothing, Knopfler's wry take on the MTV generation gave Dire Straits their first number one single in America, thanks in no small part to Knopfler's distinctive guitar sound. When people say, how do you get those sounds, usually I say, I don't know, I, you know, I fiddle about with the amp until I get something that works. That's, that's, and that's essentially what the, this was, and I had actually forgotten how, how I did it. That's really essentially what I'm doing. I'm blocking out quite a lot of notes. And as the song's going on, that's just two strings. Money for Nothing, that's a situation kind of a song. This was an electrical appliance store and the, all the TVs at the back of the store were all tuned to MTV. MTV was a pretty new thing then. And then some big meathead guy in a check shirt had been doing some deliveries and he was delivering his opinion about everybody who was on the MTV. And, uh, and I had to actually spy on him because his lines were so classic. I actually went to the counter and I asked for a pen and paper and there was a kitchen display in the window of the stores in New York and I sat down in the window of the store and started writing down the lines. So that guy essentially gave me, gave me a song. During the Brothers in Arms tour, which lasted 12 months, Dire Straits played 247 shows in 100 cities, including a 30-night record-breaking stint at London's Wembley Arena. Dire Straits were arguably the biggest band in the world. There was a kind of critical mass happening where a lot of people wanted to see the band play live. And they were into the records and they were into seeing the experience in the whole thing live. On the surface, it would appear Knopfler was having the time of his life, but he was learning that success on this scale came at a price. Oh yeah, you're really not used to it. It's a massive strain. I think that it's probably just good luck that I wasn't younger. I, I really sympathize with kids who go off the rails with it all. I, I probably just survived it, but there's a lot of damage and things happen and you, you know, things that you're not ready for um, always. It's a new experience entirely. And for a, a songwriter, a songwriter's more of an observer and you suddenly feel people are looking at you and there's a reversal going on. And of course, they're not really. It's just something that you feel because of the attention that the music is getting that week or the band's getting that week. And it takes a while to get the whole thing in perspective. Mm -hmm. 